Scientists are studying changes in the plants and animals that make up Colorado's delicately balanced ecosystem. One key to this research is understanding the effects of short-term changes in weather and long-term shifts in climate. Weather is the very short term. It's what you have from day to day. Climate is the longer term trend. It's the average of uh, the weather. You have to look at things in the, in the longer term. And climate change is all about the longer term. Just because you have a cold day or even a cold season, uh, even a cold year, does not mean that this problem of climate change has disappeared. Changes in climate produce shifts in seasonal weather patterns. These conditions cause some species to thrive while others struggle to survive. My name is Jed Prendergast with Nectar Honey Company. When the temperatures start to get warm in the spring, that is a trigger to the hive to start rearing young so that they can be prepared to gather nectar or pollen when it becomes available. The climate definitely affects that in that early spring days give the bees a false sense that spring is here and they start to bolster their numbers. And then when we drop back into a, a cold spell, it oftentimes kills the young bees and forces the colony to start over. Plants don't react quite as adversely and so they proceed with their nectar flow. Uh, once that's happened, the bees are not ready. Their numbers are not strong enough and they're unable to take advantage of that nectar and pollen flow to rear their young and to store honey for the upcoming winter. Up to 60% of our daily diet uh, is dependent upon honeybees for some sort of pollination, either directly or indirectly. We take that stuff for granted and don't realize the importance of bees in our ecosystem. There's no other insect that pollinates like bees do. Colorado's mountain species may be among the first affected by climate change. I'm Chris Ray, a research biologist at the University of Colorado. I've been studying pikas for over 20 years, mostly out in the Great Basin between the Sierra Nevada and Rocky Mountains where they're disappearing really fast. And now we're studying them in the Rockies to see whether the patterns of loss that we see out in the basin are occurring in Colorado. Pikas are only about as big as your fist and they're related to rabbits so they have a really thick fur and they're disappearing from a lot of the places where they used to be. They're disappearing very fast. What's happening? We can't come up with any explanations that don't seem to have at the root of them climate change. Pikas may be susceptible to global warming because summers are warmer. Imagine this poor little thing. It's up in the mountains all winter and it can't hibernate. So it can't let its body temperature go down. It has to maintain a high body temperature. In the winter that's great, but in the summer that really gets them in trouble because in the summertime they're racing out from their homes, gathering grasses and flowers, racing back and making this hay pile. And this hay pile has to last it all winter. So pikas can make um, hundreds of trips a day during the summer. And if it's hot outside, they're operating close to what we call a thermal maximum. Their body temperature is almost lethal. If it raises just a couple degrees, it can be lethal to them. Another way global warming may be affecting pikas is through loss of snow cover. A blanket of snow can insulate pikas from temperatures that can drop way below freezing. And losing that snow means that pikas may be freezing to death due to climate change. We're losing populations from the lower elevations so that pikas are effectively moving um, up the mountainside. It doesn't mean that individuals are moving at all. They can't respond that way. They're just being lost from these lower elevations through death or lack of reproduction.
So pikas are a particularly good example of what will happen to mountain species um, with global climate change. Mountain species are more likely to go extinct if they're forced uphill or if they're forced north because they're moving into smaller amounts of habitat near a peak of a mountain and they can't move north without going through a valley and if they're not a valley species they can't do that. The small animals form the bottom of the food chain in the mountains and so if you don't have the prey you can't have the predators and as you reduce the small mammal prey base everything suffers. Got a really fox. My son may not know pikas. And if pikas are doing that, a lot of other species could be doing that. And I, I just hate to see the loss of diversity that might be coming as we warm the planet. Climate change has also created conditions that allow some species to reproduce at alarming rates. I'm Tom Devlin. I am a professor in the geography department at CU Boulder. The mountain pine beetle outbreak is unprecedented in recent memory. The primary driver, it's climate, and in particular, it's warming climate in association with drought. Under warmer temperatures, the bark beetle life cycle is accelerated so that at high elevations where previously it would take two years for the bark beetle to complete its life cycle, under warmer conditions, they complete their life cycle in a single year, which greatly accelerates their ability uh, to grow their populations. We know that we've had widespread outbreaks in the past, and it's believed that past outbreaks have been terminated by unusually cold temperatures. Under the current warming trend, it's very unlikely that we're going to have extremely cold temperatures that could terminate the outbreaks. About 24 years ago, our family found a little bit of paradise in Colorado called Big Creek Lakes. My boys were two and four when we started um, going there, and it became a tradition for the family. Canoeing, the hiking, everything, it was so wonderful, the scenery. We've continued to go over the years, but um, what we've noticed in the last, I would say, six to eight years were the changes we were starting to see in our paradise. It's called beetle kill. First, just a few hints of red would be seen on the hillsides of the mountains. When we went this last summer, um, in August of 2008, there weren't any green trees standing. To have that kind of destruction happen within the last two years was, all of us were speechless when we stood at the shore of the lake. Certainly for the northern part of the state, uh, I would say that more than half of the lodgepole pine forest already has been affected by mountain pine beetle. You see thousands of dead standing uh, lodgepole pine. I feel that climate change is the most difficult problem that our civilization faces. It's going to require a sustained long-term response.